Hey everyone, Infinite Cas here, and welcome to another video. Today, I'm going to be talking about a crucial part of every weapon in Splatoon, and that's their kit. Every weapon comes with a sob and a special that's crucial to the main's playstyle. They can either be a huge advantage or hinder the overall potential of the weapon. And for every weapon that has a great kit, there is another one that's never played because its sob and special don't complement each other. I want to talk about a handful of weapons that don't see much play because of their kit, and then suggest how I would change them to make the weapons so much better. With that out of the way, please like and subscribe as it really helps me out, and let's get right into it. So firstly, what makes a good kit? It's to do with how well it assists the role of the main weapon. For example, a slayer should have an aggressive sub and an equally aggressive special that can help it survive when pushing up. A good kit can also cover for a weapon's weakness, like the vanilla junior has splat bombs, which have a longer range and help to pressure places the main weapon can't reach. When it comes to a special, it should be about complementing the main's role, while also enhancing it so you can become a threat. An example of this is the suction bomb launcher on the Fife and Splatter Skull, which helps dish out lots of pressure and paint while not affecting your vulnerability or position as long as you use it correctly. So let's now move on to some weapons that I would change the kit of to help them achieve their maximum potential. Firstly, I want to talk about a couple of Slayers. The Dapple Julies are a mobile, short ranged and very lethal weapon with a very fast 3 shot kill. But none of the weapon's three kits are that beneficial to the weapon's overall playstyle. The vanilla has squid beacons and suction bomb launcher. This kit does have its niche, but the less aggressive sob of squid beacons makes it less versatile and threatening in general. The second kit, the Dapples Nouveau, have Toxic Mist and Ink Storm. This kit is rarely used because Toxic Mist isn't that great a sob, and it doesn't do any damage, and the effects are not that impactful in a 1v1. Ink Storm is fine but it doesn't suit a very aggressive weapon like the Dapples. The kit I see the most use is the Clapples, with Torpedo and Splashdown. Torpedo is a great sub for this weapon, but Splashdown is easily taken out and is useless on the most part. To improve these kits, I would keep the Vanilla as a niche pick and change the other two. For the Nouveau, I would use Burst Bomb as the sub, which are not very ink heavy, but weaken opponents easily for you to roll in and finish them off. For the Special, Bowler would be a good pick, but it might make it too powerful as an aggressive frontline, so something like the Ultra Stamp would be a good option, as no Julies have that special. For the Clear Dapple Julies, the best special would probably be the Bubbles, but this would be very strong, and it's the same kit as the Kenza Jr, making that weapon obsolete. In this case, I think either Inkjet or Ultra Stamp would be the best, to further increase the Dapple's ability to pressure and deal with longer ranged opponents. Another Slayer that is held back by its kit is the Vanilla 52 Gal. This weapon has Baller, a fantastic special, but sadly having Point Sensor as a sob ruins the weapon's maximum potential. Any damaging bomb would be great on this weapon, such as Burst or Splat Bomb. While I think Burst Bombs would be a perfect fit, again it may be too strong, so I think Fizzy Bomb would be a good pick, as it's an uncommon sob and would help the 52 stand out against other shooters in the game. Moving on to another weapon class, that being rollers, there are a few kits I want to briefly discuss. The Crack on Splat Roller has Baller, a great aggressive special, but sadly has beacons as a sub. I think torpedoes would be a good fit for this weapon, to help track opponents and deal damage when approaching. The Vanilla Roller has Curling Bomb Splashdown, which is good for movement, but Splashdown does hold the weapon back. I think Burst Bomb Launcher could be a good pick as it applies a lot of pressure, but wouldn't be too powerful with a one-shot weapon. Moving on to slightly longer ranged weapons, I think the Splat Brella could have another kit. The Sorella Brella has auto bombs, but I think a better bomb such as Splat or Suction would be great. Fizzy bombs could also help with mobility and further range paint coverage. I think the Brella could do with a slightly more aggressive special, as its other kits have more supportive options. Ultra Stamp could be an interesting pick, as well as Bobble Blower to provide pressure to a wide area. A weapon that doesn't see a lot of play is the Mini Splatling, and I think a good kit could help this weapon become more used. The Vanilla has Burst Bombs, which is great for up-close fights and pressure, but Tent Missiles do not pair that well with it. I think the Mini could do well with Booyah Bomb or a Bomb Launcher, but the Pro still outclasses it so much that the main weapon itself would probably have to have some changes to make it usable. 
The Kenza Mini has Ultra Stamp, a great aggressive special, but is held back by Toxic Mist. I think it could have beacons to complement its good mobility, as the other two kits have damaging bombs. Now let's talk about the Rapid Blasters. The regular Rapid has three kits, the best one being the Kenza, with Torpedo and Baller. This kit is good, but is quite offensive and I wish there was a more supportive option. I think a good sob would be Sprinkler, as the Rapids don't paint that well and therefore struggle to get their special quickly in a match. As a special, I think Booyah Bomb could work, as no blaster has it and it's a great support option. I think the vanilla and deco rapid blasters see no play, so I would change the vanilla and it's not drastically changing the weapon's playstyle, just making it better at its job. Now let's move on to one of the most infamous weapons in the game, the Gurtuba. This weapon does have potential, but is held back by its awful kit. The vanilla Gurtuba has suction bomb and splashdown, which does not complement the weapon in the slightest. The custom has curling bomb inkjet, which is very aggressive and again does not go with the weapon that well. To change the kit, I would alter the vanilla and replace it with torpedoes, which would go well with the weapon's mechanics. As a special, I think Splat Bomb Rush would be a good choice, as it can be paired with almost anything and helps the Gutuba with paint and pressure. Another special, such as Ink Storm or Bobbles, could also be a good pick for painting and pushing people away. Now let's move on to some backlines. First and foremost, the Kenza Chargers kit should never have been released. Sprinkler as a sob is decent, nothing amazing, but it does help with map coverage and charging your special. But then you see what the special is and realise there's no point in playing this weapon. The Kenza Charger's special is Baller, which is just bad for this playstyle, as using it causes you to give up the opposition, and you are very vulnerable if you try to be aggressive. I think the Kenza Charger could benefit from a slightly more aggressive special, as it's a different playstyle, but not the Baller. I think the Inkjet could be interesting, as you can activate it at your sniping point and return back when the duration is over. However, I think Booyah Bomb would be the best pick, as it can either be offensive or defensive, but the armour allows you to have a lifeline, which gives it similar attributes to the baller, but just makes it more suited to the charger. Next, let's talk about the Explosion. The custom Explosion has Point Sensor as a sub, which again isn't a great pick. Both Explosion kits don't have an aggressive sub, but I think the Sprinkler assists the Bobbles more than the custom sub. I think auto bombs could be a good pick for the custom explosion. They have a similar nature of the point sensors, but assist the explosion more in pressuring opponents and dealing damage. The auto bomb can be thrown twice in one ink tank with a bit of sub saver, so it makes it a good fit for an ink hungry weapon like the explosion. Lastly, let's talk about the custom Eliter. This weapon is a far cry from the Splatoon 1 days. The vanilla Eliter had Burst Bomb Echo Locator, while the custom had Squid Beacon Kraken. The vanilla now has Ink Mines and Rain, which I don't mind, but the custom with Beacons and Bubble Blower isn't a great kit. If I was to change this, I would replace the Beacons with Burst Bombs, to give the weapon a chance against aggressive opponents. For the special, I would choose Tenter Missiles, as it allows you to see the location of your opponents and track their movement, as well as apply pressure to them. Not many long range weapons have missiles, which is a shame as it pairs well with a more supportive role. There are so many more weapons I could talk about, but these are some of the ones I think would benefit the most from a different kit. It's sad to see that some weapons with a lot of potential and interesting mechanics have been let down by their sob and special, and I hope that for the sequel, if these weapons return, they can get another chance to shine. There are so many possible sob and special combinations, and it's a shame to see that some of them never get to see the light of day. I also want to say thank you to Ace and Tressa for giving me advice and helping me with weapons that I'm not too familiar with. I'm definitely not claiming to be an expert, and this video wasn't too serious, so if you think I suggested a bad kit, please don't take it to heart. That's all for now. If you want to see a part 2, please let me know, as I had a lot of fun making this. Thank you for watching until the end, and I hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe, as it really helps me out and I will see you all next time. Bye.